Mastering pop, when to choose high probability trades. Pop is probability profit, by the way. Following our recent study on probability of reaching 50% profit before 21 DT, where we explain that pop, probability profit, represents the chance of making at least one penny on a trade, we received a follow-up question, a bunch of follow-up questions from viewers. When to choose high probability trades and should we start by trading high probability strategies? To address this, we conducted another study focusing on high probability option strategy strangles and examined the risk reward trade-off. Okay, that's cool. Let's see where we're going with this. So we did a study from 2006 to 2024, 18 years, strangles at 21 days in the, all the SPY, compared the risk reward trade-off at different deltas, sold extremely high probability strangles and compared the success to potential losses. That's the key here. We discussed the pros and cons of starting out with a high probability trade. Strangles are considered high probability trades, whereby the trader has bet on the market not reaching some far away bounds. So we choose how far away the bounds are through different deltas. Pretty straightforward right now, just all the stuff we talk about every day. And here's where we start getting into kind of some of the sweet spot. Now, Tony and I are in that kind of, when we talk about neutral strangles, with we're usually in that delta of about 20. 10's a little too cheap, 40's too high, 30's possible if we like to go directional on one side. But for the most part, we're kind of stuck in that, around that 20 area. We're not suggesting, we didn't circle any of these, say one's better than the other. We just wanted to circle something to say, if you sell a put in a call with 20 deltas each, your theoretical probability is 60, but your actual is 71. When we look at this from a risk reward side, it seems to us that for the money that we make, it just seems to be the sweet spot for the risk that we're taking. And we like that plus 70% probability of profit. So that's increasing the profits, what kind of really turns us on, right? Yeah. Increasing the delta decreases the pop. It's always, you take more risk, you make more money. If you take more risk, you make more money, but you're going to lower your chances of making more money. And mm -hmm. so what happens when we push the delta to an extreme and increase the pop as much as possible? You know, so, so that go as far as, as we can out of the money. What if we went to, to like a five delta or a two delta? We can get to a 95, 92% or a 97%. And the PD, the median PL drops down again. Now, none of these, I'm not suggesting any of these are any better or any worse, but you have to optimize it somehow. You have to pick a sweet spot. By decreasing mm -hmm. the delta by a large amount does indeed create a high probability trade. However, the PL reduces by a large amount as well. So the question is, where's the sweet spot? Like Jim just talked about the sweet spot in the decay curve. Where's the sweet spot in Delta? Is it two Deltas? Is it worth taking all that risk for 20 bucks? Is it worth it for $37? Or do you like that $94 better? Or do you like that $135 better? I mean, these are all really tough questions. None of this is easy. So let's go to the next slide. So it's important to note that if the market experiences a sudden move in the wrong direction, the losses could be great and wipe out the credit you received through the small increments and in high probability trades. As such, high probability trades might be worth it when we're just starting out to learn the mechanics and the platform. However, one should learn to incorporate lower pop trades into your trading to collect more credit. All, what we're really saying here is find a spot that works and don't go to either extreme. So in other words, don't go to a two delta or a five delta because you're going to find that that gets frustrating. Don't go to a 30, 40, or 50 all the time because you're going to find that that gets frustrating. The lower deltas get frustrating because, because when you lose, you, 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 know, you lose more than you can make. When mm -hmm. you, the higher deltas get frustrating because your pop's so low. So find the sweet spot. Now, what we found over the years is that 16 to 22, 16 to 25 is our sweet spot. So wrapped around 20, 22, 18, 20, 22, that's our sweet spot. And that's how we've optimized everything in the decay curve and in the sweet spot. You can figure it out on your own, but but like nothing is mispriced, but that's what we've come to. That's where we've come to settle after all this time. Let's go to the next slide. So the takeaways, your pop level will depend on your risk tolerance as higher pop trades usually come with lower credit. Higher pop may be good when you're just starting out to learn the mechanics. It's a great way to learn because if you don't, if you're learning through winning, it's great and you win way more than you lose. However, one should learn to accept a slightly lower pop for higher credit once you become more confident because you want to get a bigger return on capital. You know, if you're going to achieve some ex some return that you expect over risk-free rates, you're going to have to take a little more risk to get there. It's all about risk and reward. You're 100% correct, Sadnoff. 